Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today's video is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how I make my own jilbabs. Now, whether you call it a jilbab or you call it a long sleeve maxi dress, alhamdulillah, the most important part is this pattern will provide you with full coverage and it is super easy to make. You can use this tutorial to make your own jilbab in pretty much any color, any fabric, any style, any way you like it. Seriously guys, I have about 15 different jilbabs in my closet right now, all made using the technique that I'm about to show you. If you have any questions or you need any help, please feel free to email me. Even if this is your first ever sewing project, I am here to help. For those of you who are more experienced with sewing, please feel free to put your own spin on this pattern and customize it to your liking. I would love to see all of you rocking your own DIY jilbabs. So just remember to mention and hashtag American Hijab on Instagram so I can see your jilbab style. If you guys want to see more videos like this one, do it yourself hijabi fashion, please let me know by leaving a comment below, giving a thumbs up, or of course subscribing. Alright ladies, let's get started. So here's what we'll need. Two and a half yards of fabric. I'm using a striped material to demonstrate, but you can use whichever kind of fabric you wish. A pair of scissors. A tape measure. Straight pins used for sewing. Of course your sewing machine set to a straight stitch. If you do not know how to do this, then grab your instruction manual or of course check the description box down below. So before we start cutting, we need to determine a couple of things. First, how loose do we want our jilbab around our body? Take your tape measure and measure around the widest part of your body, whether it be your chest, your waistline, or your hip line. For me right now, it's actually my baby bump. If you take really long steps, you may also want to take that into consideration as well. Make sure you are measuring your widest part in inches. At this point in my pregnancy, my measurement was 46 inches. Now take that number and add 12 inches. So my new number is going to be 58 inches. And then I'm going to divide 58 inches by 4, and it's going to give me 14.5, which is the number that I'm going to cut on my fabric. Next, we need to determine how loose we want our sleeves to be. I decided I wanted mine to hang down about 6 inches, so I took that number and I added 1 for seam allowance. So once we've determined exactly how much we want to cut, then we are ready to go to our fabric. When you get your material home from the store, most likely it's going to be folded in half lengthwise. So we're just going to want to open up the material and fold it in half the other way. So now it's folded widthwise. Straighten the material, make sure everything lines up evenly. And then fold the material in half one more time. So this will give you four layers laid on top of each other. At this point, you should have a fold at the top of your material and a fold on one long side. Using my tape measure and my scissors, I'm going to measure down from the top and mark the 7 inches for my sleeves. Now I'm going to run my tape measure parallel to the marking that I just made for the sleeves. I'm going to line it up at the fold and then I'm going to use my second measurement and I'm going to measure in 14.5 and mark this area. Remember, this is your width measurement that we took before. You can mark this area with pretty much anything, but I'm going to use some chalk. Now that we've marked both measurements, it's time to cut. So I start at my sleeve marking and I work my way inward toward my second marking. Once I reach the second marking, I stop, I turn my scissors 90 degrees, and now instead of cutting across the material, I'm cutting straight down all the way to the bottom. Okay, so at this point we should have the basic outline of our gel bab. So you have one, two, three, 
and four extra pieces of material. You're just going to want to take these rectangles, fold them up, and save them because we'll be using them later to expand our gel bath. So next we want to cut out an area for our neckline. I'm going to do this up at the folded corner. I'm going to measure in about 3 inches and then I'm going to measure down about 3 inches. Now this measurement is going to vary depending on the type of material you're using and how big you want your neckline to be. So don't be afraid to adjust these measurements and then just cut from one area to the next in a half moon shape. So this is what you should have so far. An area for your neckline, the sleeves, and of course the length of the jilbab. And also those extra pieces of material that we set aside. Here is where you're going to want to adjust your material. Because for this next part we're going to be working closer to the bottom near the hemline. So first start by pulling up the top layer and then folding the bottom layer under. And we're just doing this to get it out of the way and make sure we don't pin or cut it accidentally. Now that we've repositioned our top layer, you're going to want to grab one of your extra pieces of material and you're just going to lay it right sides together, that means pattern facing pattern and adjust this little piece of material right over the bottom of the hemline. You're going to make sure that it's even on one side and also even with the bottom. Now just check one more time to make sure you have right sides together. Now you will probably notice pretty quickly that I am not a big fan of pinning. But in this case it's kind of necessary. So go ahead and just take a couple of pins and put them right along these two pieces of material to keep them together. So it's pretty obvious that the base of my jilbab is shorter than the excess material I used. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut off the extra piece that I have hanging over. Now, once again, we are going to save our material. Don't get rid of this because this little piece of material is actually going to become our cuff. So now it's time to turn our jilbab over and do the same exact thing on the back. Once again, start by lifting up your top layer and then folding your bottom layer up and out of the way to make sure we don't pin it or cut it by accident. Once you've readjusted, then you can go ahead and grab another piece of extra material, another rectangle, and just straighten it along the bottom hemline just like we did on the other side. And of course, take a couple of pins and just pin these two pieces together to make sure they don't go anywhere. Grab your scissors and cut off the excess. Make them even. Now it's time to sew these two pieces together. You're just going to make a straight stitch right along the bottom. To sew these two pieces together, we're going to make sure we use a one inch seam allowance. That means make sure that your needle enters the material one inch from the edge. The reason I did this is because you'll notice on some pieces of material there's little holes along the edges. We just want to make sure that we avoid these. Now we're just going to go ahead and sew straight across, maintaining our one inch seam allowance the whole way, and of course adjusting our material as we go on. Don't be afraid to take your time. With your material laying flat on the table, just trim about an eighth of an inch away from the seam you just created. So here's what the front of your gel bab should look like now. I used a striped material because I wanted you guys to be able to see how the material changes directions. It's a nice added dimension to your gel bab. Next we want to attach the other two panels from the other side of the gel bab. Once again use a one inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. Same as before, trim any excess material about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. 
So the two small pieces of material you see here are the same pieces that we cut off when we attach the two panels to the front and back of the jilbab. They're pretty much the same size, but I want to take my scissors and just trim around the edge to make sure they're as even as possible. Now take each of these smaller pieces of material, fold it in half lengthwise. Make sure it's even all along the side and the bottom. And then do the same exact thing for the second piece. And now we're going to sew a straight stitch along each of the edges. Once again, this is a one inch seam allowance. Now that we've added a straight stitch along the edge of each of these pieces, we're going to trim off any extra thread that we have on the ends. But what we are not going to do is we are not going to trim off any excess material. Leave it alone. Put down the scissors. Now just check to make sure that these pieces are long enough for your cuff. If not, grab one of the other pieces of extra material and use that instead. Go ahead and find the neck hole and then follow the material straight down to the edge of the sleeve. Here's when you're going to take one of your cuffs and lay it directly across the edge of the sleeve. Make sure it's lined up along the edge and along each of the sides. So to stitch these pieces of material together, you're going to use half an inch seam allowance this time. Not a full inch, only half an inch. So straight down and adjust your material as you go. On the inside of the sleeve, you should be able to see where you sewed two seams. But on the outside, you should only be able to see one. Once again, notice the direction change of the material. Locate the neckline and now follow it down to the other sleeve. We're going to attach our second cuff just like we did the first one, laying our material flat on the table and then aligning our cuff evenly with the material. Again, half an inch seam allowance. Sew straight and adjust your material as you go. Now that we've attached the second cuff, we're just going to cut off any extra material. We're going to do it the same way we did before by just cutting about an eighth of an inch from the seam that we created just to get rid of any excess material and bulkiness that we may have. Now let's just double check and make sure we've done everything correctly. We should have two panels, one attached to the front and one attached to the back of our jilbab. And we should also have two cuffs, one attached to each sleeve. Once we're sure that we've done everything correctly, then we're going to go ahead and turn our jilbab inside out and then start aligning our material all the way around, making sure it's even. Next, we're going to go back to our sewing machine and sew a straight stitch all the way across the sleeve and then straight down the side of the jilbab all the way to the bottom. So sewing this seam is going to be exactly like all the other ones we've done already, except for one thing. We want to make sure that we have the seams we already created aligned with each other, okay? So just grab a pin and put it straight through those seams to make sure it stays in place as we begin to sew. Like I said before, I don't like pinning and I don't do it often. But this is one of those cases where it's really important. Go ahead and grab a pin and align your seams to make sure they stay aligned while you begin sewing.
only after you've pinned then can you grab your pair of scissors and just trim any excess just to make sure that everything is even for our sleeve we are once again going to use a one inch seam allowance just sew straight adjusting your material as you go until you get to the armpit area then stop now that we're getting ready to change direction, we're going to insert our needle into the material and then lift the presser foot. Once you've done that, turn your material 90 degrees and then put the presser foot back down. Now we're going to sew straight down the side of our gel wrap. This time we're no longer on a one inch seam allowance, now we've moved down to a fourth of an inch seam allowance. That's pretty easy to do because your material will most likely line up with the side of your presser foot. Once again, you're just going to sew straight. As we get closer to the bottom, we're going to want to make sure once again that our seams are aligned. This is so, so important. Make sure that those two seams are exactly on top of each other and you can once again use a pin to hold them in place. Then readjust your material and continue to sew straight. Notice I'm taking my time because I want to be sure that those seams align with each other. After you've crossed over those seams, you're pretty much home free. Just go ahead and continue down the side of your jilbab to the bottom using that quarter of an inch seam allowance. we finished sewing up one side of our gel bab. Now we're just going to cut off any extra material on the sleeve area. Now just continue trimming off any excess material and you're just going to do that all the way until you reach the armpit area. Then we're just pretty much going to cut off this strip. We're not going to need to do any trimming of excess material along the sides of the jilbab because we only used a fourth of an inch seam allowance. So it should look pretty good over there already. Now you're going to want to try on your jilbab inside out just to check for fit and then we're going to bend over and adjust our hemlines ourselves. Okay, so if you have somebody around to help you, it's probably easier that way, but most of the time I do it this way. I bend down and then I fold up the material and put a pin where I think it should go. Then I will go ahead and stand up, check to see if it's right, and if not, then I'll readjust. It's pretty much that simple. While we still have our gel bab on, we're going to go ahead and check the length of our cuffs. This is completely customizable and depends on how you like your cuffs. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, making sure that they're pretty much even with each other. With our gel bab laying flat on the table, I'm working down on the hemline. As you can see, I am measuring one inch from that fold of my estimated hemline and I'm just marking it with a piece of chalk. Next, I'm going to remove the pin and then I'm going to turn my jilbab right side out again. Once we have our jilbab laid flat on the table again and we can see the mark that we made for our hemline, we're just going to go ahead and cut straight across, making it even with the marking that we made. So, separating the majority of our jilbab from the piece that we just cut off, I'm going to go ahead and take that small piece once again, using every piece of our fabric possible, I'm going to turn this inside out. Oh, 
use my scissors to cut off the edges because they have seams on them. Same thing at the other side. Now I'm going to take one of these pieces of material and I'm going to get it ready because I'm going to cut a strip that I'm going to use as binding for our neckline. Now I turn this piece of material over with the right side facing down and I'm going to fold back one inch of material. Make sure it's even all the way across. Go ahead and grab your tape measure and just double check to make sure that it's one inch across. Now we're going to cut using the edge of the material as our guideline. Once we're done, we should have a strip of material that is actually two inches wide, but we're going to fold it in half so we only see about one inch. And then I'm going to pin each of the sides. Once our strip looks like this, we're going to set it aside until we get to our neckline. Okay, so back at the sewing machine, I am getting ready to stitch up my hemline. Now I'm going to insert my needle into one of the side seams and then I'm going to sew a straight stitch. I am actually still sewing a one inch seam allowance here, only I'm allowing the extra material to flow to the other side of the presser foot. And that's because I want to get my hem as close to the bottom as possible. Now that we have a beautiful hemline, let's just go ahead and trim off any extra material just like we always do, about an eighth of an inch from the seam that we just created. Our Jill Bab is coming along great. One of the things we have left to do is our neckline. So we're going to take that extra strip that we created and we're going to use this strip to encase the raw edge of our neckline. So you've already folded it in half once. Now before you sew it, you're going to fold it in half one more time with the raw edge of your neckline in the middle. The hardest part is pretty much getting it on the sewing machine, so take your time. Once your needle is inserted, then you can go ahead and start adjusting your material. It's already been folded in half once, like I said, so just go ahead and place the raw neckline in the middle and fold it in half again, and then you can start stitching a straight stitch to hold it in place. Now, remember you always have the option of pinning. Since I don't like to pin, then I have to take my time and readjust my material as I go along. As you make your way all the way around the neckline and you come to the end, your edges are going to overlap just a little bit. So when you're done, just go ahead and trim off any extra that you can from the pieces that overlapped. And there you have it, your finished neckline. Last but not least, the cuffs. So here's what you can decide. If you want to make them shorter, you can fold it in take off the extra arm on your sewing machine and then put the cuff up there and just stitch it into place. For this particular jibab, I'm just going to leave my cuff as it is. That way I have the option for extra coverage when I want it. And that's all there is to it ladies. I pray that you found this tutorial helpful and you're able to fill your closet with tons of jilbabs using this pattern. Alright, I will see you next video. Remember to rate and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum.